Good morning, everybody. I'm a touch early this morning. I want to start out by saying today's lesson is going to be a little bit more. Uh, it's going to have, I'm going to have a lot of information. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. By request, I'm going to go over some art. I'm just going to go over sweeteners in general today. And so uh, I would like for you to, hopefully you're in a place where you can get a notebook and a pen and take notes because I do not have a PowerPoint for this. I will not have class notes for this. I apologize up front for being unprofessional or ineffective at this teaching method that I use. However, um, this is this is it's what you get this week. Um, so it, uh, hopefully you're in a place where you can uh, take notes. If not, if you're watching this on replay, this is a good time to hit pause. Get yourself a notebook, get yourself a pen uh, and um, or a pencil and get ready to take notes because this will hopefully help you over the longevity of your Shibboleth experience and even uh, into your life. So um, uh, give me, I, I'll be I'm, I'll give you a minute, a moment since we're live still and it's just now nine o'clock. People will still be piling in. Uh, I will, I'll be happy to type it in the, the chat right quick. There, how about that? And I will um, get my ACV in while we wait. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are, are having a good week. I am. Oh, Lord. I actually taught this lesson a while back. But it was in a different format. Good morning. Lord, are we, are we, we're down to just a few folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for saying good morning, Jane. You know, I have people that don't want me to call their name. I have people who have joined Shibboleth and gone to a online meeting, not a webinar, a meeting, and they are under the impression that they can be seen. They do not want to be seen. They do not want their name called. If you're one of those people, I want you to know that in the, let me see, in the participants tab at the bottom of your screen, I'm almost certain that's, that's where it is. Yes, you can click on your name or go to your name and it'll say allow to talk, uh, it'll say more, I think. You click more and you can rename yourself. If you don't want me to call you, you, all you got to do is, Change your name. Change your name to anonymous or make it initials or whatever. Just so you know, there are ways to remain nameless in Shibboleth webinars and on meetings. If you were to happen to go to a Zoom meeting, you can name yourself as little as possible and don't turn your, your camera on. Just be initials or anonymous. You can even say your name is anonymous. I can't remember, but last night I actually had two nameless people on my class last night. Did any of you get to participate last night at 830? Christy can't chat. She's driving. Patricia can't chat. She's driving. That's okay. Remember, um, good morning, Angela. Uh, good morning, Millie. Remember that uh, this, this is going to be a lesson, a class. Uh, not so much motivation, more of a uh, informational lesson. And you'll need a pen and paper today, please. If you're uh, driving, you'll want to revisit this class. So today, we're going to talk about sweeteners. And I mean sweeteners. I'm going to try to get to where I can use as much of my whiteboard as possible. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, darling. Good morning, 
Angela and Christy and Jane and Lynn. Good morning, Mary Lewis. Millie, Patricia, Paula, and Shanda. We had very, we're, I don't know what's going on with uh, with attendance. Maybe 9.30 has, or, or 9 o'clock has become the uh, time for something else to happen. Remember, today's day four. Today's day four. We're on Thursday of the C plan. If you're doing C plan, if you're having an elite or an extreme day, just, just remember to declare your day your eating window and your fasting window on elite and your eating window on extreme. First lesson, all right? First lesson, everybody, how many of you understand the weight loss meter? How many of you understand the weight loss meter? The weight loss meters, I'm gonna just start out by giving these simple instructions and we find where I am on the board, okay. The weight loss meter goes by a zero rating. Zero would be not good for you for weight loss, not bad for weight loss. It is a neutral, uh, has a neutral position. If you go into the plus side of the weight loss meter, this is probably, this is backwards, I, I should say. It gets it's a little worse for you. It's a little bit more counting against your weight loss. A positive three would mean it's as bad as it can be and still be approved, okay? Which means that the food itself has a positive effect towards weight gain or against you, okay? But it's still approved. Now, a negative one means it's not neutral. It actually helps you with weight loss. Negative two, it helps a little more. Negative three is the best possible designation for weight loss that a food can get. All right, Jason, I thought we were talking about sweeteners. What's this all got to do with um, uh, sweeteners, weight loss meter. It, it, it doesn't. I'm just hoping and praying that you guys understand the way the weight loss meter works. Okay. Sorry. I'm, there we go. The way the weight loss meter works. So I can teach you these sweetener things using two new meters. These are meters that I've made up. Okay. These are meters that I made up. So, eventually, one day, we will have a health meter on Shibola, okay? The health meter will be judging food by how healthy it is for you, and it may not be foods like category food, listed foods. It may be more a restaurant or a recipe uh, labeled uh, things on the health meter. But for now, I'm going to make up a meter and I'm going to call it health meter or let's say healthy meter. So I'm going to have a healthy meter and I'm going to have, are you with me? An insulin meter. Okay, so both of these meters work just like the weight loss meter. If it's a zero, it doesn't affect it, 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 it's it, it's it doesn't affect you. If it goes in the positive, it affects you in a bad way. If it goes in the negative, it affects you in a good way. Is everybody with me? I know that's I, I hate that about the weight loss meter. That negative means good and positive means bad. But that's the way it is. I need some confirmation that you guys are following along with what I said. If, if, if y'all don't understand this basic principle of what I'm about to teach you, then I, I, it, it doesn't matter what I, I'll have to figure out another way to tell you. Okay. So if I say on the health meter, it is a plus three, that means what? 
it's going to affect you in a negative way to the worst amount, right? If I say on the insulin meter, it's a plus three, it's going to shoot your insulin through the roof, right? If I say on the insulin meter, this is a negative three, which I, I, I don't know that I have too many of those, uh, but there are, there are a few. Zero means it doesn't affect your insulin at all, right? Are we, are we, so we're together. Good. I'm going to write these out in a list form, and I'm going to put help. I'll just go ahead and label it out. So I'm, I'll probably need all my board. <laughs> I'll, obviously, I need some more Windex. Okay. And what else would be good is, that's not going to do it. There we go. When in doubt, break a new marker out. Yes, I just did that. Okay, so we're going to go with sweeteners. Y'all can see that, barely. Okay, and we've got health meter first, and then we've got insulin meter. I'll just go I for insulin. Can y'all see all that? Let me get this out of the way. Uh, I can't see it. So uh, there we go. Now, so I'm going to list sweeteners on the over here. How it affects our health here, how it affects our insulin here. And I'll probably butcher some of this spelling, so just stay with me. The first thing we want to look at is um, aspartame. As aspartame is the sweetener that is in Equal and NutraSweet and a lot of diet drinks. Okay, aspartame is a healthy uh, sweetener. Now, whether or not you like aspartame or not, uh, whatever you read about aspartame, these are, I'm not going to give you a personal, um, uh, a, I'm not going to cite any medical logs or anything like that. I'm just going to go through this list. I'm going to try to give you, give this to you as plainly as I can because it could take a long time if I don't. Okay, so aspartame is pretty healthy, okay? It has a zero to a positive one effect healthy. Doesn't affect you, and it could affect you slightly in a negative way. That's what the positive means, right? Good, you're with me. However, it has a negative three effect on the insulin level. If we're trying to control our insulin levels, aspartame does not affect our insulin at all, okay? So we get um, pretty sweet. Aspartame is, a, is a, an extremely sweet alternative sweetener. Something to, uh, something to consider, right? Next, we'll look at sucrose. Now, sucrose is just table sugar, right? It's table sugar. Sucrose on, I'm going to say this, everybody kind of should understand this. On a health meter, sucrose is a zero to a plus three. Depending on how much table sugar you use, it can be a, a, a non-health factor. It can just be what you get. Used to sweeten your your um, your food with. When it comes to baking cakes, or you know, think about how much sugar you put in per serving. When it gets into the making sweets and things like that, that's where it starts to affect things like our teeth. It starts to affect our health. So sucrose obviously is a positive three on the insulin. Table sugar will shoot your blood sugar through the roof. Okay, a cousin, okay, a cousin of sucrose is sucralose. Now, sucralose is Splenda. So it's, a, it's, when I say a cousin, 
obviously it's pretty pretty close on this um, the way it's spelled. It's ge um, genet or uh, not genetic, but it's it's makeup is very similar. Um, when you break it down, sucralose or Splenda is a zero on the health meter. Doesn't hurt you, doesn't help you. It's just pretty much a, a non-factor. Uh, on the insulin, zero to what? Plus one. If you're using the little packets of Splenda, it's better to use the, um, it's better to use Splenda uh, in the, buying it in a large quantity. The little packets typically tend to have a little bit extra in there okay and it will affect your blood sugar in a negative way right plus one it's not a lot just some okay let's look at this fructose now fructose is basically sugar that is derived from fruits it is the uh, the sweetness that is in fruits you probably understand fructose mostly. We hear fructose uh, when in nutrition labels when it talks about um, corn syrup, and I'll get to that in a minute. But fructose, in this sense, a good way to look at fructose is honey. Honey is a is a fructose sweetener. So if you think if you're thinking about using honey to sweeten your your uh, foods. Let's talk about this for a second. It's going to be a, a plus one, a plus one on the health meter. Let me tell you why. Because fructose, unlike glucose, both of them are, are sugars that are derived from things, right? Fructose actually is metabolized in the liver, okay? Whereas glucose is typically metabolized in your muscles and in your cells, fructose has to be processed in your liver. So honey in small amounts is, is a relatively healthy thing. However, and, and we, can, we could debate this a lot. However, honey easily translates into fat in the liver. If your liver is busy processing a whole lot of fat or or fructose, it will it would rather instead of going through the long process of turning those uh, fructose uh, molecules into um, glucose and burning them off later in a cell, it will just turn them into fat. So honey is a form of fructose. And uh, it is definitely easily turned into fat there in the liver. I would say anywhere from zero effect on your insulin, okay? Zero effect on your insulin to up to a plus three. <laughs> up to plus three. Meaning a very, a tiny amount of honey to sweeten something and maintenance. We're talking about um, a lifestyle here. Honey would be an excellent way to sweeten things later in your uh, wellness lifestyle. Uh, but if you're still used to very sweet things and you're using honey to make things very sweet, you're probably using a lot of honey. And uh, the more honey you use, the more likely it is to affect your insulin levels. Um, everybody with me so far? I know I'm going through this rather quickly. We're going to move on. Monk fruit. Now, monk fruit is a, we're going to go with a negative one on the health meter. Monk fruit actually um, is good for you when it comes down to your health. It's, a, it's an excellent, it's very sweet. You'll need to uh, learn how to regulate its use. However, monk fruit um, could have zero to a negative two effect on your insulin. So we found a, a, a winner here in monk fruit in that it is both pretty healthy for us. It's better than not healthy, you know, no way at all. And it has a good effect on our insulin. Harder to digest. Um, where am I at? Monk fruit. Let's go to 
Um, a lot of your favorite sweetener is stevia or stevia, however you pronounce it. If you're going to use uh, stevia, know that stevia that is not in the liquid form has another artificial sweetener added to it, okay? So, or an alternative sweetener, maybe allulose, but typically it has a mixture of sweeteners in it. Has anybody learned anything yet? I hope you are. Stevia, let's stick with liquid stevia at best, okay? Liquid stevia is the best. And if you want to know how it winds up, we've got a negative one on the health meter. And, but, okay, but stevia can have the, uh, the, a bad effect on our insulin. Stevia can affect our insulin. So if you overuse stevia, know that you can be causing yourself to have a spike in insulin. What does that mean? The fat bus, right? Insulin's the fat bus. Fat bus is as the fat bus is, the fat bus does as the fat bus does. It, when it is coursing through our veins because it has been triggered, it takes a while for it to, to come down. So when using stevia, Use caution. Does that make sense? Y'all follow me instead of, when I say use caution, I mean, um, you know, use it with caution. Um, maybe you, uh, when you're eating things that are, or, or drinking things, or, or, or probably drinking, I would think, things that are sweet with stevia, maybe have it with a meal that's a one plus two, you know, something that would slow down the digestive process. Don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these things unless you have a ton of questions. Oh, let's see where I am on my, on my screen. Agave. How many of you like this stuff? Agave comes from a, uh, comes from a cactus. It's the sweet, uh, the, the glucose basically that comes from um, a cactus. And let me, re let me digress. I said that it, that's not correct. It's the fructose that comes from a cactus, okay? So typically if you're pulling a fruit off of something like monk fruit, except for monk fruit would be one that is, that, this, that goes against this rule. Typically if you're getting sweeteners from a fruit, it's fructose, okay? It's fruit sugars. Lots of fruits have both glucose and fructose. Okay, but let's just look at it like agave. Is in order to get agave out of a cactus, I don't know if y'all have ever had cactus, especially the agave cactus, you will notice that it ain't sweet. Okay, it's not sweet. So in order to get the sweet from the agave, it's got to be ultra processed. Okay. In order to get that sweet syrup out of the agave, it's super processed. In that, in that process of super processing the agave, it's pretty much, pretty much, it's, it's more, mostly fructose. So I'm gonna give it a plus one to plus two on the health meter, not good for us, not good for us. And on the um, insulin, meter a plus three. What does that mean? Stay away from agave. Okay, stay away from agave. Even table sugar has the ability to not harm us in an in a unhealthy way. Agave is so processed, we're going to stay away from it. I hope if you're, I hope, um, just from my recommendation. Okay. Let's just, to keep me from having to spell all this out, high fructose corn syrup, HFCS. High fructose corn syrup is exactly what it sounds like, okay? We've been talking, I've been talking about fructose now for a, for a little bit. Fructose corn, extremely processed down to the sweetest syrup that is there um, will become super duper sweet. Now it is so processed, your, our bodies are so shocked by high fructose corn syrup that it immediately sends it to our liver. 
it immediately sends it to our liver. Number one, it's super duper sweet. It's super duper processed. Our body cannot break it down like glucose. So it doesn't get a, do a giant dose of, of, um, of, of insulin and it goes straight to our muscles and gets burned off. Instead, it does get a giant dose of insulin because it's so sweet. It tricks our body into thinking that it's sugar, but it has to almost in its entirety. And it is like high test terrible is what it is. It's high test terrible. It goes into our liver and our liver has to process that. High fructose corn syrup is definitely attached to fatty livers, okay? Typically fatty livers have a, a, a direct um, connection to high fructose of corn syrup, liver, uh, fatty livers. Now, it's, I'm gonna give it a plus three on both sides, just in principle, plus three on both sides. Don't be mad at it, <laughs> but this is where we are, okay? And I think maybe I can get a little bit more out of it if I turn this down. Y'all don't get mad at me for adjusting all this. There we go. I can get a few more on here. So what could there possibly be? This is another one that you're going to see. Erythritol. Erythritol. Erythritol is called swerve. Okay. Have y'all ever had swerve? Swerve is pretty good. Swerve is a fibery sweetener. So there are some good aspects to erythritol. We're going to go with negative two to negative three on the health meter because of that fibery aspect that goes along with its, uh, with its, um, with what it is. Now, Swerve is not as sweet as some sweeteners. Okay, so you might have to have a little bit more Swerve in order to make it. Um, a, a sweeter thing. However, we're going to go with a zero on the insulin response. Zero on the insulin response. Okay. Can y'all still see? Not necessarily. Hang on. If y'all start seeing my toes, it's bad. <laughs> I do have more board down here, but it's hard for me to write. Okay. Only a few more. Okay. And now, this one right here, isomalt. I've taught, how many of you have heard my, my, my artificial sweetener and, and alternative sweetener lesson where I go through the breakdown of uh, glucose and its properties? If you haven't, it's in the, the video library as well. Maybe I can pull up my uh, notes on it, but. I digress. I'm going to stick with this lesson for now. Isomalt. Are you ready? This is the one that, that it's used a lot. It's, it's often labeled as sugar alcohol. Okay. Although a lot of these alternative sweeteners in the macro sense are sugar alcohol. Okay. In the macro sense, in the micro sense, they have different names. In the macro sense, in the big in the big sense, sugar alcohol will cover a lot of these, especially these alternative sweeteners that don't have an effect on your uh, on insulin production. A lot of people can get away with calling them sugar alcohol as a macro, okay? But and and I don't mean as a macronutrient, but I mean in the large sense of looking at it, in the in the in the uh, individual sense of looking at it. It's going to be called isomalt, okay? Isomalt. Now, isomalt is diabetic candies. So when you go to the store and you buy Russell Stover's chocolates, they got isomalt in them. Did anybody just catch that? Um, the little sugar candy or sweet uh, sugar candy alternatives that are at the store, sugar-free cough drop, sugar-free. They typically are sweetened with isomalt. What, the little um, icebreakers that are in, it looks like they're in a, 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 they're in a little bitty can that the lid flips up on both sides. Those are typically sweetened with isomalt. What does iso, yeah, there you go. There you go, Millie's got it. Isomalt will give you gas. <laughs> it, it, too much of it will give you diarrhea. Okay, 
And that's because isomal is one of these things that typically, so it doesn't get a, a rating on the health meter, okay? As far as I'm concerned, it has to do with your consumption. Okay, so if you consume a bunch of that stuff, just like Millie said, your belly's going to be bloated. Um, it's going to mess with your, your poo one way or another. Either you're going to have oil slick or you're going to have smelly gas or whatever, and you'll learn your lesson from eating too much of it. Excuse me. It does, although it's diabetic friendly, it does, work. I'll give it a, here, let's just do this, a plus one to minus one on the health meter. Because it's not really hurting you in the health, health way. So that'll cover this lesson as, as it can be. However, they actually can have an effect on your insulin, okay? They don't always do this, but the reason why on the back of your nutrition label, when you see sugar alcohol listed, it's listed because some diabetics are actually sensitive to sugar alcohol, okay? And if they're in there, it needs to be taken into account. If you're a diabetic and you know you're sensitive to sugar alcohol, you will not subtract that from your net carb. Anyway, so I'm gonna give this a plus one to plus two on an insulin response, depending on how much you eat, you, you're going to have a small insulin response with isomol. Um, let's look. Yep, I'm still on the board. I can't believe it. Allulose. How many of you have used allulose? Allulose is not very sweet. Okay, allulose is, is that thing that they add to uh, stevia when it comes in the big giant powdered bag. It's got a lot of allulose added to it to give it depth. So, so your bag has some weight to it because stevia is so sweet. Don't take much to sweep things up. You put that allulose in there. Allulose, the, the neat thing about allulose is, is your body actually doesn't um, metabolize it. Your body doesn't, it, it basically passes through your body um, it absorbs it, but it doesn't metabolize it. So it takes it through there. It, 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 it responds to it, but it basically processes it out. So when it gets to um, the lower extremities of your body, it's, it's when it actually absorbs, okay? So it's processed really late in the digestive process. Allulose gets a negative two or a negative three on the health meter. It's pretty good. See, mostly because you don't get the response from it and it doesn't cause a metabolic reaction. You get something sweet, let's call it semi-sweet, okay? Let's call it semi-sweet. That doesn't actually harm you enough. So we're going to give it a negative three on the um, insulin level, okay? You're not going to have an insulin response with allulose. Um, and then we've got one more to add. So, yep, we're getting into my toes. All right. Now we've got maltodextrin. All right, maltodextrin. How many of you have heard of maltodextrin? It's a, like a starch that's added to things to make it sweeter. Okay, you want to look out for maltodextrin. Um, maltodextrin is a zero to a plus one. A zero to a plus one. Terrible. I'm getting down here where I can't read my own writing. If I can't read it, y'all can't read it. Maltodextrin, zero to a plus one with a plus one to a plus two effect on your insulin. So look out for it, meaning you may have a relatively healthy monk fruit sweetener, but if it's been combined with maltodextrin, it's going to have a bad, it's going to have the, the effects of the maltodextrin. If the monk fruit has been, if allulose has been added to it, we've got a we've got a winning combination. Does that make sense? All right. So this is this is not a comprehensive, um, one hundred percent. Like this doesn't have everything 
that is considered a sweetener on it, this list, but it covers almost all of it, okay? Covers almost all of your sweeteners here, including, including table sugar, honey, and agave. So I like this lesson because it just gives you the beginnings, okay? It gives you the beginnings are y'all with me? I'm, I may have lost every single body. I haven't got any of my, any of my, let me get the chat pulled up here so I can see it. Okay, so this doesn't actually tell you, do it, don't do, do it. Use it, don't use it. Buy it, throw it out. Okay, it, it, what it does is it gives you uh, the beginnings of a thought process that hopefully you can do your own research with and make the best decisions for yourself. I wanna tell everybody, when you are in a beginner phase of wellness, some of us get so intrigued with um, the, the mechanisms and the processes that we, we terrify ourselves, we get ourselves, we back ourselves into a corner where I'm just starting to, I cut, I'm not eating that. Jason said it, it could have a, 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 this kind of effect or that. Listen, we, we always have to learn how to try the spirits and see how they affect us, okay? There's, we don't avoid all of this stuff without going to a 100% whole food diet. And if you're not ready to do that, this is an awareness class. This is an awareness lesson. Take these lessons as uh, th this lesson, an awareness lesson, as it's the begin. It's the thing that starts to turn my the gears in a more healthy way. Okay, that's my way. This weight loss meter that I'm using is flawed. This insulin level meter that I'm using is flawed. It's flawed in that I am using general recommendations over the general populace. Okay. All of these things are gonna affect the individual differently. So when you start to experiment, no, no. When you start to pay attention to what you've probably already been eating, you will start to find, like Patricia says, as I read labels and as I start to comprehend and understand what's in my Mighty Muffin, what's, what's in my uh, oatmeal pie, because I love those, maybe why some of them slow my weight loss down a little bit and my weight loss starts to speed back up after a day or two days, or maybe why some things just, why, why I get wound up on some things and some things I don't, why I get gas on some things and some things I don't, why I retain water on some things and some things I don't. All of those have, that's where this health meter comes in okay and then the insulin meter just gives me just gives me this ability to say um jason said this one if i'm not careful with will cause an insulin response and with an insulin response that's right maltodextrin angel with an insulin response I know that insulin is the fat bus. Do I want to make that decision willingly, indiscriminately, without um, thought or process of my own? Okay, that's that's where that's where our responsibility starts to become. Um, well, it's the factor that keeps us in the. Um, well, it keeps us being responsible for ourselves. That's that's basically what I'm trying to say. Every time I eat a piece of uh, I eat a grape, right? Um, I I know that I've got some sucrose in there because it's a fruit, but it's mostly fructose. It's mostly um, it's mostly fruit sugars. Grapes are going to process in my body different than corn, right? Corn is has some uh, fructose in it, but without being ultra processed, most of the corn or the taters are going to have more of a uh, sucrose 
uh, in them. They're going to have more of a, a natural sugar in them. And this is something that we'll learn over time. Okay. Starch affects us a lot like sugar. Okay. When you get starchy foods, they're going to have, you know, we're not, we haven't gone over starches. We haven't gone over things like that. The more processed you get, the more your body thinks you're eating sugar, the more what? The more your insulin responds to it as if it's sugar. So we'll learn all. It just gets more and more. It's really, uh, I, I am, I am not, a, I, I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this, I'm sure. But when you start to really get into these things for yourself, it's like when somebody who, uh, I, I think of a specific preacher, when he goes back through something that I've read a hundred times and he puts the, the pieces together, it's like, ah, oh, that, that, that makes sense to me. Now I see it differently. I got it from another angle. That's what these things will do for you over time as you uh, pay attention to what you eat, how the food you eat affects you, not just in the moment, because this is what we've always done, right? Yum, tastes good, right? That's what, when we go and we see Russell Stover's candies at the Walgreens and they got 43 different ones and we look at it and we think, am I willing to spend my 150 calorie snack on one turtle or two turtles, whatever that comes out to be, you know what a turtle is, and for, for what Travis calls a moment of mouth pleasure, it's approved, it tastes good, it may, Jim, it may fix your sweet tooth, but it, will, it may turn you into a trumpet or a trombone or a flute, it may make your belly hurt, it may make you have cramps, it could give you a touch of diarrhea, so those are things that don't happen right then when you eat it and you get that mouth play. Does that make sense? So that's what, that's why the, the lesson is now. I just taught it, right? The experiences as you go through this lifestyle will be from mouth pleasure. Now think about this. Here's, here's the end of the lesson. Mouth pleasure to 24 hours later. You mean I've got to be aware of what I just ate and how it affects me for 24 hours? Yes. Okay, 12 to 24 hours. That's how long it takes something to get from here out, processed and done. Now, that doesn't mean your body's not still reeling from it, feeling the effects of it. Inflammation. Okay, all of these things are, are part of it. I... And, that, and that's where I'm, I'm going to end my lesson right there. I'm going to, I'll get into something else. So let me stop the recording.